This is the final tutorial in a series of tutorials about creating a simple experiment with Pebble. Uh, the previous one showed how to make a basic design and shuffle um, different trials. And what we're going to do this time is uh, put in a lot of little things that help make the experiment more useful, uh, easier to distribute, and um, make it sort of finish all of the things you need to make it a study that you can collect um, good data for. So the final um, version, we can open it up, here has most of the same things, but it has a lot of other little pieces. So we'll talk about these each separately. Um, first, it has a way of creating uh, baseline parameters that you can access via um, via the launcher. Next, it checks for whether you've entered a subject code and enters it automatically if you haven't. Um, next, we have a way of creating and saving uh, data to a file. Um, here's the stuff that was here already. Now, because we have some parameters we can set, between the minimum and the maximum. Uh, now we have to do some checking to, to make sure um, to, to uh, make sure we have realistic start and end points for the even and odd values. This is the same. This is the same as before. This is the same as before. Um, then I did some decided that usually you want to have a few practice trials. So we have three practice trials that are just hard-coded that um, are there to uh, get some people warmed up and they don't have any impact and they aren't even recorded. Then here's the um, same data and all I've done in here is change the print list to a file print list and I'll show you that in a little bit. And then I decided that we needed a ISI or an inter inter interstimulus interval time between each trial that can be an option. So uh, I decided that there should be four parameters before we have only had one as reps. We could have four that we could set. And to do that, um, what I do is create a list of parameter values, um, a nested list of parameters and values in the script. These are the default values. Um, and then I use that with the function create parameters and I give it the argument g param file. This is automatically um, an automatic global um, variable that's set by the launcher. So let's look over here. Um, when you, if you want to ha access these different parameters, um, so within the launcher, if I hit edit, I can edit these, I can change them, I can, maybe I want four digit numbers and I can do something like that. Um, what you need is three, th you need a couple different things. Um, first of all, you need there, within the fo folder you're running in, there needs to be a params folder. And here's the params folder. And there needs to be a schema file. The schema file is organized uh, like this, and it's just the information that's going to appear here. So you separate these with this pipe. Each row is going to be the value, then the default value um, within this setting, and then a description. And um, then separated with a carriage return or an, an enter. So this is the format for the schema file. The, the launcher will look for that schema file, and if one appears, it will allow you to do this setting. So I can change these things, and when I save that, it then saves that in, um, as a custom parameter file. So for example, here, it will save these pairs reps should be 5, ISI should be 500, min val 1001, max val 9999. And so you can have a custom parameter set 
and let's say I want to use that one or I want to use the default values or I have a high numbers one as well that might if we look at what high numbers is it's going to be a thousand and nine hundred ninety nine you could change the reps you could change the ISI and things like that so the whole way that this gets hooked in is through this code here so you set the default values that you want to use if you don't if you don't have a parameter set and that gets read here it doesn't actually ever read that schema file the script doesn't read the schema file only the launcher reads the schema file um, and so it, it will use these values if there is nothing in param file but if you override with a param file it will pull them out of the the parameters file okay so now it creates an object called gparams and these different values can be accessed by gparams.reps, gparams.isi, gparams.minval, gparams.maxfile. So any um, parameters you want to set and have access to outside, you can put in here and then uh, let the user specify these however they want. I first use these down here where I try to find out the min and the max odd and even values from the min val and the max val. So, um, and you see I access gparams.min val, gparams.max val. Um, I guess they are, I don't know where, I, here I use gparams max val. Um, gparams reps is used here and so on. Okay, so that's how you uh, expose different values you want. Um, within the script to the launcher. Now usually um, the subject code that's entered here will automatically get uh, used. Sometimes if you bypass the launcher in one way or another it'll use zero. So I usually put code like this in just in case I'm running it in a different way and I want to be sure to be able to set the subject code. The next thing that's uh, useful to do is have a data file that's saved. And um, I'm going to use a function called get new data file. And this is <coughs> one that um, tries to set up a, a, a file within the data folder. So if we go here, if the data folder doesn't exist, this will automatically create it. And then it will create a subdirectory for the, the subject code that you just ran under. So we just ran under. Well, I don't know what we ran under, but um, and then um, following that, it will create a file based on uh, this name and this type using this header. So if we look in here, we've got um, data from another run, and it created even odd dash twenty in the folder twenty because it was run with subject code 20 and it uses header subnum trial start time number etc subnum trial start time number so this is how you create a, a fairly foolproof data saving file so this get new data file there's other ways to create csv files but this one does it in such a way that it it um, creates this folder automatically and then checks to make sure you're not reusing it if you're reusing it, it gives you a chance to uh, rename the, the subject code and things like that. So that's how we create this um, file. This file just, it creates the file and it prints a fir this first line to it. And then by assigning it to G file out, we can then print to that file using the file print command. And if we go down to where previously I had a print list. I use a function called file print list here and I print to this file name and I print the same thing I'd done before. Um, so this is just um, a simple way of printing out that whole CSV line. I think this argument tells what to use as a separator in file print list. So every time a trial is run a new uh, row should be saved and it'll look like this. It'll be subject code, trial, start time, the number that the judgment was made, whether it's odd or even, the response, whether it's correct, and the response time in milliseconds.
okay. Um, next, I wanted to add practice trials. And so all of this here ends up being the same as in the previous one. There's nothing uh, too tricky about that. Um, the only th thing is, which I talked about before, is now I get the start and end points out of the G params instead of just by default using 101 to 999. So um, you might want to do a little more checking in here to make sure the max val is greater than min val or that there's at least uh, as many numbers as you want picked in there. But um, I tick that this has um, the experimenter is going to hopefully choose something reasonable and if it fails because these fail, they'll get a warning message that will help them figure out why it fails. So all of this is the same as the previous version, except for using G params instead of the hard-coded numbers. Um, so then I thought we should do some tr practice trials. And I just ran, and I do this in many, many tests. Before the design starts, I'll run a few practice trials with just hard-coded values or randomly chosen values. Um, and in between each one now, it has this ISI, this wait period. This uses a wait command, which just waits a specific number of milliseconds. Um, so now this is the same uh, basic code as we saw before, but um, there's one separate one thing that's different is um, I wanted to rec I wanted to compute a value at the end of the whole experiment. I want to find the mean response time and mean accuracy. And because um, this is just printing everything out, we don't actually ever keep track of anything. Uh, so I created two new lists, RTs and cores, which represent the, R, re, the response times and the correct values. And on each time, because I saved this, the output of the trial, I use this function push on end, which takes this value and puts it on the end of this list, and takes this value and puts it on the end of this list, the fourth value out was the whether it was correct or not, and the fifth value out was the response time. So on each trial, I'm going to put, put on the end of each of these lists, which started here, either the response time or the accuracy of that trial. I added this wait function, so we have a inner trial interval. And then we get to the end, and instead of exiting right away, I create a little report value little report text. So um, here is I can take the RT and find the mean value or the mean or the median value and I can find the mean accuracy. So these are some important things you might want to put. And then I just built a text uh, uh, some text that cr uh, creates a report based on some output. I put a timestamp as a subject number so you could have that in there you know exactly when they did it. That's a function that you can do that will print out a timestamp. Um, this CR1 does a carriage return of one, one carriage return. So it's sort of a way of putting a hard carriage return in. It tells you the length or the number of trials, the mean RT, the median RT, and the accuracy. And this something like this can be really useful for if you're you know, a clinician wanting to get all the data from a subject rather than run it through or from a patient rather than run it through analysis um, if you just want to know what that person's value is. Um, you could also save this in other tabular formats if you wanted. But So I'm going to use this get new data file again. And because the subject had already been used, it will just put in the same directory. And it will be even odd report dot text. And then um, at the end, this test is complete. Press OK to continue. And then it actually gives the report. So the report will look like something like this. E participant 20, media, mean RT, median RT, accuracy to 80%. Um, and that's it. Everything else is the same. So these are some of the things I like to put in an experiment when I'm distributing to others because it makes it more useful. Um, and it sort of finishes the experiment and makes it um, so that they can access different aspects of it. So before we use it, let's try, let's run this, and I'll do just five repetitions. Um, 
high, through high numbers and we'll see what it looks like. All right, odd. These are the practice trials. Okay, so there were 10 trials. My mean RT was 617 milliseconds. My me median RT was 548. My accuracy was pretty poor at 80%. And that was participant 24. If I would go back here to data, I now have participant 24. I, by opening up the CSV file, I get a log for every trial. You can see where the errors are, where the correct responses were. And this is the same report that we just saw. Saved out for you. Um, you can save it and look at it later. All right, so that is it for this tutorial on creating a simple experiment in Pebble. And we went from the beginning where we just opened a window to creating trials, scoring the trials, creating multiple trials and a design for it to all the little things like saving data, collecting subject codes and things like that, that we need to create a real study that's robust and can be used in a laboratory. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.